Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking some time out of your day today to learn about Google Voice and how your business can benefit from investing further into G Suite's integrated tools for collaboration and productivity. Let's switch. My name is Rob Moore. I am the Director of Customer Support for Sweetbriar. Today, we will be joined by David Rosenthal from the Google Voice product team, who is responsible for outbound go-to-market activities for Google Voice. David has been kind enough to help educate our customers today on the benefits and the features of Google Voice. While this session is intended to be informational, Sweetbriar has also partnered with Google to offer attendees of today's session a substantial discount to help get started using Voice. More details on that will be given at the conclusion of today's presentation. During today's session, we will examine why Google Voice makes sense for your business, what kind of benefits your end users can expect to gain, and finally, how admins can benefit from this move, centralizing voice controls right in the G Suite admin panel that many of you are already familiar with. First, just a bit about who Sweetbriar is. Sweetbriar is a Google Premier partner with nine years experience helping our clients to best utilize their G Suite investment. Whether it be shared drives, Google Cloud Search, Google Cloud Platform, or moving users to Google Voice as we will discuss today, there are always new ways to enhance your G Suite experience. As your Google partner, Sweetbriar is always here to help you assess and evaluate how effectively your company is utilizing the G Suite tools available to you both now and as you grow down the road. We have experience in multiple verticals, moving our clients from a variety of platforms into the cloud via G Suite. We help our clients create GCP projects of all sorts. We migrate data from legacy servers into the cloud for accessibility anywhere. We help clients better utilize Meet with Chrome hardware for meetings, and we help you to establish better manageability over your workforce with the managed Chrome browser. We also offer a variety of training options to get your users up to speed with any or each of these products. Near the end of today's presentation, we will be briefly discuss the discounts you can receive as registered attendee of today's webinar. So please stick around for that. Right now though, I'm going to hand the reins over to Google Voice Specialist, David Rosenthal. David. Very good. Thanks very much, Rob. I, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, inviting me on to talk to you, your customers about uh, G Suite, Google Voice, and our collaboration portfolio in general. Um, as Rob mentioned, my name is David Rosenthal. I, uh, I'm a Google Voice specialist, which means I, I sit on the voice product team and I, I do a lot of this type of work, which is kind of outbound work with customers and partners to really understand um, what your voice requirements and unified communication requirements are today and really translate that into um, uh, into functional requirements for our product team and also to help you guys understand what what products we're building today you know what's on the truck today and also uh, what we're what we're planning on building in the future um, so I've got about I would say this this presentation is probably about 25 minutes which is going to leave us uh, a bunch of time in in the uh, uh, sort of second half of the hour to to do questions and answers. So while we don't have um, mics open right now, uh, I wouldn't encourage you to type any questions that you have down. Um, and Megan's going to sort of co collate them, and then we'll break sort of halfway through the presentation to to answer some questions, and then we'll do an an overall wrap up at the end. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So. We realize that the workplace is changing. Um, we've got a lot of data from our, our customers and partners, and we're, we, we understand that uh, probably better than 50% of uh, the workforce is, is in some way mobile. And when we, when we sort of think about mobility, we don't just think about the, uh, the, the person who's 100% work from home or just the salesperson who's on the road in Albuquerque and in New York the next day. We also think about people that work in offices um, that aren't necessarily in front of their desks all the time, right? That need to be, have some level of reachability and communication. So, so we understand mobility is more about um, is more about reachability anywhere on any device and on any network and not necessarily tied to a particular job function. Uh, we also know that the pace at which um, 
communication is changing is, is rapidly increasing. Um, so uh, typically when this is an open forum, we do some, uh, we do a guessing game here. So in, um, we basically say, how many years has it taken for the uh, telephone network to reach uh, 50 million users? And the answer to that question is 75 years. So the uh, telephone network had 50 million users in, in kind of like the, the 70s or something like that. Um, and then we bring it bring it home a little bit. So YouTube, for example, took three years uh, to reach uh, 50 million users. And then amusingly, uh, Angry Birds took only three months to reach 50 million users. So what that says to us is that the pace at which uh, businesses are communicating and the paces at which you know companies are growing and users are being added to systems is is growing at an exponential rate. And we really are are in the forefront of that. Um, so when we sort of theorized what Gmail should be, um, we just imagined that it is, you know, that we wanted a web application that's available from anywhere on any computer on any network. Now, where Gmail is today is, you know, the largest cloud mail platform with over a billion users that is intelligently driving features like Smart Reply and Compose. So we've taken something that was very basic and rudimentary and made it the smartest email platform in the world. We're, and we've done that historically with um, uh, Team Chat and, and Hangouts Meet as well, right? So these are two products that I'm imagining you've got at least some level of familiarity with that have taken you know, the concept of chat and the concept of meetings and made them smarter, more accessible, and more, more easy to use. Um, the reason why we're focused on, on voice now is really about expanding the scope of communication for G Suite. So while we're super thrilled that there are over 50 million G Suite users in the world today, we do acknowledge that there are 8 billion telephone numbers across 6 billion users. So really, when we think about why Google Voice, we think about bringing that level of connectivity to G Suite. Um, and we've got to acknowledge that phone rooms do suck. And this is actually a picture of a phone room from Mountain View, uh, from our uh, main office location in Mountain View in about 2010. So we had a massive of I implementation for, you know, something like 30,000 users, and we were um, non-plus. So we got rid of them. Um, we've been working on implementing Google Voice internal to Google since uh, I think 2012, and we have subsequently ripped out almost 97% of our hardware, and we've given Google Voice numbers to 85,000 users. So while Google Voice for G Suite is a relatively new product launching um, earlier this year, this is the same network that processes calls for our internal calling platform, uh, our NVNO called Project Phi. Um, it's the same network that allows you to call into a, a Google meeting from a telephone. Um, it is the same network that uh, places calls and allows you to text message for click to dial ads, as well as uh, calling from, from Hangouts. So all of this kind of runs over the same network that has been processing billions of calls from millions of phone numbers for many years now. Um, when we think about how to make voice calling better, Right. We think of it in, in generally one area, which is how do we bring uh, artificial intelligence to a, a legacy uh, communication product like voice? So here are just three examples where we're bringing Google AI to voice. And these are all this is not roadmap. This is all feature functionality that is in the product today. Um, so our auto attendant is fully text to speech enabled. Um, it leverages the same internal technology called WaveNet that we use to produce natural sounding voice for uh, the Android Assistant in Google Home. Um, we leverage text 
to speech for voicemail transcription. So this is a powerful neural network that uh, translates and transcribes audio in 12 different languages so that you never have to call in to check your voicemail ever again. Um, and we borrowed the uh, industry leading spam model for Gmail and implemented a voice version of that for uh, preventing robocalls on our voice product. The primary calling applications for voice are a web app for desktops and laptops um, and a native uh, mobile app for iOS and Android. Um, these applications are intended to allow you to control exactly how telephone calls reach you, which devices ring and in which order and when you don't want them to ring. Um, for users that um, want a desk phones, we support a small subset of the Polycom uh, product portfolio for desk phones. These are super easy to use um, uh, and easy to administer. So you can just buy these devices on Amazon, from CDW, from VoIP Supply, from basically anybody who sells uh, desk phones. You unbox them, you plug them into your network, and then you just enter in a MAC address from the back of the phone into your G Suite admin console and the email address of the person that wants to use it, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything to the phone except for plug it in. For users that want to use the um, software-based apps, either on mobile or, or on laptops, we also certify a set of leading headsets so that we can assure the highest level of quality experience you get um, using voice or meet or chat. Um, as I mentioned before, our, all of our voicemails are transcribed. Um, we transcribe in the active and sec in the primary and secondary language in every country that we offer service in. So for example, in Canada, um, we support English and French. Um, in, in Portugal and Spain, we speak, uh, we, we translate Portuguese and, and Spanish in all those countries. So the idea is if you are in a covered country, we, uh, the, the native languages are all, are all transcribed. Um, the goal is to never have to call in to check your voicemail or to go and see if the little red light's on on your phone. Um, so the voicemail notifications are provided to you via email, via text message, and via, nap, uh, via application notification. Um, we've got tight integration into uh, a variety of other G Suite applications. So for example, um, our smart do not disturb product uh, integrates to calendar. So you can set your calendar office hours or set your out of office hours to control do not disturb so that when you're outside of your working hours or if you're on vacation, the calls don't continue to, <coughs> excuse me, the calls don't continue to ring on your desk phone when there's nobody there to answer it. Um, the, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are observing this, but we as telecom providers certainly do. Um, the amount of robocalls in the U.S. at least has increased 3,000% uh, this year. Um, so we've implemented uh, the same machine learning algorithms that are on Gmail to identify and remove spam. We've implemented that on uh, voice calling so we can identify and move spam calls automatically to the trash without ringing your telephone. We focused a lot recently on uh, meetings integration. So, um, Here's just a, a simple use case, which is, let's say we're in a meeting, like the meeting that we're in right now, and we need to uh, reach a subject matter expert on telecom regulations, let's just say, um, and we outdial to that person. Um, if we just outdial to their telephone, right, to their cell phone number, um, they'll just get an incoming call with, uh, with no context with it whatsoever. If we call out to their Google Voice number, the subject of this meeting will be presented on their phone, so they will know the exact context of that call before they pick up the phone. And this, these are areas that we're really focused on, right? Making, taking these very typical, um, uh, these very typical activities 
uh, that are, you know, that, that happen in our day-to-day -day lives and just making them a little bit easier, a little bit more simple, a little bit more contextual, and, and therefore providing better communication collaboration to the user base. From an administrative perspective, um, the goal with Google Voice is to incorporate all of the administrative functionality within the admin console. So in yesterday's world, you would need to have access to your PBX web portal and then probably a web interface from Verizon or AT&T or Comcast where you manage your phone numbers and then maybe another interface where you looked um, to download your invoices and your bills and you know yet another interface um, to log into to G Suite to manage your, your mail and your apps. Um, so our goal is to unify all of this. So Google Voice today um, unifies both the number portability function, the user administration function, and the billing and invoicing function for voice all in the G Suite administrative console. So you can assign a phone number, port a phone number, assign a user, look at, the, look at your bill, all from a single interface, including activating desk phones. So our number portability framework is fully automated so that you don't have to get on the phone with any service provider to port your telephone numbers over. You just plug in some information right from the right from your existing telephone bill from Comcast or Ring Central or whoever, and we move all of those phone numbers over. Um, this takes about two weeks in uh, in the U.S. We have a bunch of enterprise grade features that are intended to re replace typical enterprise PBX functionality. So for example, um, we have an auto attendant and the auto attendant answers the main number and create allows you to create a set of auto attendant branches and trees where you can play messages, transfer calls to hunt groups, um, transfer calls to users, play messages or record greetings. Uh, all of this runs on top of the most powerful and expansive cloud communications architecture in the world. So Google data centers are the, the most modern data centers in the world and ride on top of the largest private network in the world. Um, all of our voice services meet a stringent level of telecom regulation and compliance. So we're HIPAA compliant if you're in the medical field. Um, we have e-discovery and vault integration if you have concerns about, uh, about any sort of e-discovery issues. Um, Voice is a core G Suite service, which means we comply to that, the, the same service level agreement. And then all of the regulatory compliances that are functionally required to launch a business voice service like lawful intercept and emergency filing are all fully supported on the product. Um, in terms of the stuff that's coming out over the next couple of months, so our ring group slash hunt group product is actually just rolling out next week. Um, we're enhancing our call transfer with uh, integration into chat so that instead of doing an attended transfer, we pop up a chat dialogue so that you can chat to the far end before you end up transferring calls. Um, we're working on more headset and desk phone um, uh, certification specifically in the area of conference room phones. So if you've got a conference room that you don't want to put meeting hardware in, um, we can, we'll, we'll be supporting those desk phones. Um, lots more G Suite integrations later on uh, this year and, and early next year in the areas of meeting integration so that we can assign Google Voice numbers to Hangouts meeting room hardware. Um, and have tighter integration so that you can move from chat to voice to meetings in a very smooth and organized way. Um, just a couple of words about uh, some of our customers that are using the product already and why, they're, uh, why they selected to rip out their PBXs and use Google Voice instead. Um, so Dow Jones is a part of News Corporation which is one of the largest media corporations in the world. And they're using um, Google Voice to standardize 
a single technology across their entire footprint. So News Corp includes Dow Jones, Wall Street Journal, the New York Post, uh, News America, Move.com. These are all companies that were acquired by News Corp. And they've decided to, the same way they consolidated productivity on G Suite, to consolidate voice on, on Google Voice. Um, Nielsen is a, a media analytics company. Um, they chose to roll out Google Voice to all their remote workers. Um, one of the things that's interesting about, about Google Voice is that um, we implement, and this is gonna get a little nerdy for a second, we implement what are called enhanced packet cores, which are um, essentially pieces of the mobile phone network that Google owns, and we locate them adjacent to um, operators like Verizon and AT&T. And what that allows us to do is bring media calls, right? Whether it's Hangouts or um, or Google Voice or anything that is, you know, sort of requires high quality um, high quality video, even YouTube for that matter. And we sort of pull that directly from the mobile phone network out onto the Google network, so that it doesn't have to cross um, internet peering points. And that allows us to deliver the highest quality audio for voice. Um, I think probably the only other company that does that is Facebook. Um, City of Edmonton is, uh, you know, obviously a local uh, local government in, uh, in in Canada, and they're using Google Voice as a method to save money. They're ripping out some Cisco infrastructure and and implementing Google Voice instead. Um, Portland State is uh, using us to sort of upgrade their infrastructure, so they have a really old Nortel PBX that is falling apart and they're using Google Voice to kind of replace that. Um, and ZPG is, uh, ZPG is sort of like the Zillow of, uh, of the UK and they've decided to, you know, just sort of unify all of their IT on Google. So, you know, just as part of the onboarding experience for new hires, they give everybody a Google Voice account. So that's just a smattering of, of existing commercial voice customers that we've onboarded since launching in April. Um, in terms of how much this costs, uh, there are three packages available. And as Rob mentioned, when we kicked off, we're gonna be um, offering some promotional pricing at the end of this, uh, uh, at the end of this call. Um, so uh, unless you're a really small company, like less than 10 people, um, uh, the starter is probably the starter package is probably not relevant. This is only for very small businesses. Generally, when we talk to customers, we have to either decide between the standard package and the premier package, and those are twenty dollars and thirty dollars a month, um, uh, twenty or thirty dollars a month, including usage in the U.S. and Canada um, per user. Um, both of these uh, packages support. All of the advanced features like auto attendant hunt groups, uh, advanced transfer, and and the likes. Um, the big difference between them is standard package. You can only operate in one country, meaning everybody has to have U.S. phone numbers or everybody has to have U.K. phone numbers. Um, with Premier, you can have an office in New York, an office in Los Angeles, an office in London, an office in Paris, and all of them can. Uh, uh, get access to Google Voice and make calls to each other on net. So standard is for one country, Premier is for multinationals, and those are less prices. And we're, Rob is gonna talk a little bit about the promotional discount that we're making available for anybody who has participated in this webinar. Um, in terms of Google Voice's availability, so it's available Essentially, every country that's blue plus Canada and Ireland are rolling out this week and next week. So I would consider them basically available as well. So this is US and Canada. And then those countries you see um, in, in blue in Western Europe. Um, we're launching a beta in Japan uh, in the beginning of October, sort of a couple weeks from now, but that, that service will not be generally available for probably uh, nine months. Uh, the regulatory environment is relatively difficult in Japan. And then next, we'll be working on countries like Australia, 
uh, Germany, Belgium, and Italy to kind of round out Western Europe and, and some, of the, uh, some of the Pacific Rim. So that's the availability. Uh, unfortunately, if you have users that are outside of those particular countries, they will not be able to use Google Voice. Now, um, what you, or Rob, I don't wanna steal your thunder. Do you wanna introduce the discount that we've been um, approved to give away? Absolutely, I think, David. Uh, so for being in attendance today, guys, we have the uh, wonderful opportunity here to offer you 30% off of your standard plan pricing or 40% off of the premier plan pricing. So as you can see on the slide here, it's going to be $72 per year per user for the standard plan and $144 per user per year for the premier plan. So uh, significant discounts there. Um, if you are interested in that, please contact us here at customer success at sweetbriar.com so we can discuss those plans with you. Uh, and see how we can get voice into your organization. Uh, I think at this point, David, it looks like we have a few questions. Maybe you want to jump yeah, into some of those? Sure, great. Thanks, David, for that recap. Um, looks like a lot of people have questions about the future capabilities, um, and I'll run through a few of these quickly now. Uh, Ryan Elliott, thank you for your questions. The first, David, um, desk phones are currently locked down. Any plans to open them up for full, full features in the future? Um, so currently, you know, we only support sort of the, the, the basic features in terms of Google integration, right? So there's, you know, inbound, outbound calling. Um, we are working on some, uh, we are working on some things in the areas of ring groups so that you can select caller ID um, that you want to, uh, the, the use case there is um, you're part of a ring group. Um, and you want to originate calls with the caller ID of the ring group and not necessarily your own personal phone number. So that's stuff that we are working on. And then there is some ability on the phone just to do things that have no impact on Google Voice, like creating speed dials and that sort of stuff. So uh, can I ask what is the specific um, area that you're interested in, in opening up? Opening up? Sure, and Ryan, give me one moment. I will take you off mute. Ryan, you should be able to respond if you would like. Yeah, it's just a question. Um, excuse me, can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry, Ryan, we can't really hear you. Could you speak a little louder? Sure, can you hear me? Perfect. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we have a phone and it's the OB, OBI, whatever you know, the, the phones that you guys support and one of them is a 150 and I think we have a 250 and a 350 and we go to, we go to set up like contacts and a lot of the features the phone offers, but every time we do, it does like a hard restart. And based on our research on your support groups, it appears that you guys have your own sort of software or implementation onto the phone. So it kind of overwrites the firmware on the phone. Is that correct? So we have our own specific configuration, not our own specific software. So okay. I, I think that that and and were you did you open up a ticket with support and get like the uh, your administrative password? No, they, and, and that's and that's one of the things we can't find either. Is the, is we call Polycom and they have no clue what we're talking about. They give us the, the the admin passwords and all that, and then from the forms, I guess you guys assign the password to the phone to try and. Correct. But but even if we got that password, a lot of those features aren't even available. So my point is you can't really utilize the phone's features in terms of like contacts on there, quick transfer, speed dial. I mean, a lot of the the ton, tons of features just aren't operable with, I guess, the and I don't know if it's the Google Voice doesn't support them or I guess my point is, can they be operated like a normal office phone at some point in the future? Is that the plan or? It, so the plan is absolutely for them to operate like a standard office phone. Um, I think there are some concerns that we have where you've got feature glare between a feature that's available on the phone and a feature that's available on Google Voice. And in those cases, we are going to disable that function. Um, from a contacts perspective, I think that that's something that we're not going to do. You know, our goal for contact management is to have them manage, you know, to, to leverage the G Suite directory. And uh, we don't really see the phone being able to consume that directory in an easily usable way. 
Um, we are evaluating some, uh, some desk phones for availability uh, early next year that run Android. And if it runs Android, you can sort of hook it up to G Suite and um, get access to your G Suite directory. And, and there we feel a little bit more confident that, um, uh, that we're going to have a little bit better of a, uh, a, a of a method for dealing with with contacts, but if you if you wouldn't mind, I, uh, I I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more offline feedback on this. So Megan, okay. if you could um, connect me or or send him my uh, uh, email address, I'd like to get a little bit more detail on what you're trying to do. Sure, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep, yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. Sure, I'll coordinate that offline. Thank you for that response. Um, it looks like we have another question from Gordon. And his question is about the capabilities in call transfers. Will that only, um, I know this is a future feature, but will that only integrate with Google Chat or would it work with other systems like Slack, et cetera? I've never heard of Slack. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so uh, right now, the, at least the operating plan is it, it is only going to work with, um, uh with chat okay and also with uh in consolidating phone systems um is it possible uh, let's see do we know when we'll be getting call queues and hunt groups i think you mentioned that in your timeline for future yeah, features. So, so hunt groups are hunt groups are rolling out over the next couple of weeks um if you have participated in beta um, we can get early access to hunt groups. Otherwise, it will be available in, you know, more broadly in uh, in the beginning of November. Um, in terms of queuing, we don't consider queuing to be a standalone feature. So we would expect queuing to be a enhancement to ring groups. Ring groups is what we're calling the the hunt group functionality. And, and we expect that to be delivered in our second version of Ring Groups, which is expected in the first half of next year. So we would expect that queuing and music on hold fit in that timeline for Ring Groups. Okay, great, thank you. And then it looks like we have a question from Stuart that might require a bit more context. His question was, can you give some information regarding conference calling? And Stuart, I'm gonna take you off mute. Stuart, you're off mute if you'd like to ask your question. Yeah, we're presently using uh, Uber conferencing and some other conferencing packages. And I just want to know what the functionality that voice has uh, in it to uh, allow us to use conference calling. Yeah, got it. So, uh, so essentially, so and essentially, I'm sorry, go ahead, Stuart. No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, so the so the multi-party functionality for G Suite is Meet, uh, you know, meet.google.com. Um, so with Meet, which comes with G Suite, you have conference ability, meaning you can create a meeting and then that meeting has conference call coordinates. So it's got phone numbers and dial-in conference codes so people can call in. Um, we have for how that impacts voice um, next year we'll be building a escalation process uh, so that if you're in a one-to-one -one call and one of the users is a google voice user they'll be able to hit a button and convert that call into a meeting with just two people in it and then more people can join that meeting um, I don't know exactly what the limits are going to be, but I believe the last time I reviewed the plan of record, it was 50 people in the middle skew and 100 people in the top skew. All right, thank you. Hi everyone, it looks like there's no more questions at the moment. If you have a second and have a question, feel free to enter that here. Thank you. 
David, do you have a rough F rough of when Google Voice will be available worldwide? So worldwide is never. Um, there, there are, you know, some, the, the way we deal with country rollout is that because voice is a regulated entity, we actually have to apply as a, um, we have to apply as a telecom operator in each one of those different countries. So we basically, um, look at countries that have, um, lots of G Suite users, um and uh you know that's how we sort of prioritize our list of countries um the goal is to support about 40 countries for google voice so that means the rest of western europe or as far east as we can go where where voice is still sort of okay to run in a hosted voice over ip environment there are certain countries in the world like china and india where this is kind of prohibited by law so I can give you a little sense of the countries that we are looking at for, for our next wave beyond what we put in the um, put in the slide. So we're looking at some Latin American countries. They would be Mexico, Brazil, and you know probably Peru and Colombia. Um, in in Asia, we're looking at countries that have a regular, re relatively open regulatory environment like Singapore and Hong Kong, um, probably Korea. Um, Australia, New Zealand, um, and and Indonesia, um, and then uh, you know Middle East and Africa, probably uh, South Africa, Egypt, UAE, Israel, um, and that's that's kind of like brings us to about forty. But we're we're never going to do all all hundred and eighty countries. Great, thank you for that answer. And folks, if you have any questions or, or want to review any of the features that are available currently, feel free to ask those in the chat. We'll give everyone a few more minutes. Someone has asked, will the Philippines be included? So the Philippines are a, uh, are a country that is what we would consider an unfriendly regulatory environment, very similar to India. So we might support those countries, um, but not in a typical Google Voice topology where we manage the phone numbers. Um, we would look at, at deploying those countries where you as a customer would buy a telecom circuit from, uh, from whoever the local Philippine service provider is and connect to that to Google Voice. So that is our plan of record for countries like India, China, mainland China and uh, Philippines. And Kuwait. Great. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for your time and your knowledge share. It looks like we've run out of questions at the moment. Super. Well, then we get to give everybody back 20 minutes, which is probably more valuable than a Google Voice discount. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's lunchtime. Yes. All right. Thanks again, David. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, again, please contact us here at customer success at sweetbriar.com. Uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you. Have a great day.